that's that blazing yeah, yeah. Welcome back to my channel. Long time no see. I feel like I say that every time I get back on YouTube, but it definitely has been a long time since I've last seen y'all, spoke to y'all, or y'all last seen me on here. Um, I kind of been ghost on all of my platforms for real, and I need to like shake that. So this is me trying to get back into the swing of things and be more consistent and just really preparing myself to take it all the way come 2024. Like 2024, I'm manifesting so many good things for myself. I have so many goals that I want to accomplish. I feel really, really good about 2024. Like I'm super excited to see what the year holds for me. This year definitely shot by super fast. I was not prepared at all. Um, but yeah, I haven't been on my channel in so long. Like, I don't even know where to start. Like, where do we even start off at? Where, where do we even pick up at? But let this be like a welcome back video to YouTube. I was getting ready to start my day and I'm like, let me record a YouTube video. I know I've been missing in action from Instagram, shoot, Twitter, and definitely YouTube. I kind of just wanted to fill you guys in on my life and what I've been doing. Big moves that I've been working on, where I'm at mentally, my love life, who am I talking to? Did I move? Am I moving? You know, all that good stuff. Um, I really want my channel to be a space where you guys get to know a little bit more of me on the personal side versus blazing what I choose to show you guys. So I think this is definitely going to be like a warm up video to really allowing you guys into my world, into my life. I think it's only fair um, that I start to do that or I allow you guys a little bit of insight because I feel like I've been giving you guys blazing for so long that you guys don't really know Jonai. And Jonai is who made blazing. You know, like blazing would be nothing if it wasn't for Jonai. So let's get into this video. I'm going to be doing my makeup during this video just because I've been super into super into makeup lately and i have to go do a photo shoot for my boutique later today so why not just get ready for my day and talk to you guys at the same time gives you guys kind of a different vibe i know as girlies out there like me who don't know how to do makeup but we're slowly learning um please don't judge me though because i'm not a pro mua i just do what works best for me and at the end of this video y'all might be like Jonah, you look a hot ass mess. You need to stop. But I feel like I could do it a little, a little one too. <laughs> but anyways, let's get into this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn your post notifications on, and thumbs up this video. I miss John. I'm so sorry I've been missing in action, but I promise I'm going to be back consistent. So I know probably some of y'all are going to ask me, oh my God, where did you get your makeup bag from? Where I got this off of Amazon, and I think I only paid maybe like $25 for it. I really need to make an Amazon storefront or an Amazon, what is that, link? Did I say storefront link? Whatever, whatever the case may be, because I'm always on Amazon ordering shit that I do not need. And when I get it, it'd be like super, super cute, and I'd be obsessed. And people always ask me where i get like my little trinkets and gadgets and gadgets from girl amazon so if y'all want the link to this makeup bag um let me know in the comments down below i'll probably put it in the description along with some of the other stuff that i have in this bag that i got from amazon as well i have some questions here i'm gonna be looking at um just a few questions nothing too serious because i want to give y'all the real tea in my next video that i'm gonna drop before i do my makeup i already washed my face 
and everything. I put witch hazel. I use witch hazel as like um, a toner for my face. And as y'all can see, I have like scarring from pimples and stuff. I hate the fact that I'm one of those people who get pimples and instantly start picking and trying to pop it. I never let the pimple stay on my face and just go away on its own. I hate that. I hate when they get white. I just be wanting to squeeze them. Um, but I really do want to try pimple patches. So if y'all have tried pimple patches, let me know how they work. Because I've been seeing a lot of videos about them and they seem like they work, but I don't know. So let me know if y'all use them and if y'all like them. I tend to start with my eyebrows. So that's what I'm going to start off with first. Um, and the first question I'm going to answer is how life has been. I'm going to give it to y'all raw. I feel like 2023 has definitely been hard for a lot of people, myself included. Um, this was by far like the hardest year for me. Um, I went through a lot of stuff, you know, I, I lost a lot of people in my life that I thought I was really close to and that really loved me and I really loved them. But, you know, like now looking back on the loss of friendships and relationships and stuff, I really feel like it was for the best of me and where I'm going next in life. Um, you know, but at first when I'm losing all these people in my life, I was definitely hurt. I was sad. And it, the, th the funny thing is I always lose the people closest to me around my birthday. Like, I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I'm entering a new chapter in life that God is like, okay, you're going to this new chapter. These people, you've outgrown them. Like, they can't come with you or they're not going to feed you in this new place I'm going to place you at in life. And, you know, like, I never been the type to really question God and, you know, why he does certain things. I kind of just let him do him because my faith is stronger than any any doubt. But, I mean, I feel like I can't complain. Life's, life's really been good lately um, outside of the bullshit that I've had to go through this year. Overall, life is just life and I guess. Like, I don't feel like anybody's life is perfect for real. And if they say that their life is perfect, they're lying. Because I can't be, I know I'm not the only one that feel like 2023 took them through hell. The deepest depths of hell and back. Um... But outside of that, life, I don't know. Like, I, I've i been I've been good. Um, I've been traveling a lot. I've been meeting new people. I've been, you know, kind of scoping out my new home and where I want to be next year. Trying to regain focus on my business and my boutique. Um... I've been spending a lot of time with family. If y'all know me, if y'all been watching me from like day one, y'all know I'm super, super family oriented, which is why I feel like it's so hard for me to leave the Bay because I have like younger siblings. And I'm like, I'm so close with my mom and my dad. Like, I don't, I don't know what I would do. If I lived like out of state on my own, you know, like it's not, home is not down the street no more. Home is ours and thousands of miles away i don't know how i feel and that's why i feel like i'm low-key second guessing myself but i'm gonna get into that whole details of moving out of state and all that in like a later question mm -hmm. life i've been just making memories with those that i love that are still around me um i have friendships that i only developed maybe two three years ago and me and my friends are closer now than we ever have been and i just love that for me because y'all know me y'all know it's really hard for me to make friends like i'm really a stern person when it comes to relationships and friendships because i feel like i'm so genuine that as soon as you do something to make me feel played or make me feel like i gotta look at you a certain type of way i'm gonna cut you off 
So the friends that I have now, if y'all are watching this, know I love y'all because I know I'm not an easy person to deal with and be friends with. And the fact that y'all have dealt with me and are still friends with me today, just it warms my little heart and it makes me want to cry because I know I could be a bitch and a bird. The next question is how is my mental health? Um, I know I just spoke on how 2023 has been like the hardest year for me. My mental health was really being tested this year, I feel like. I'm not normally the type of person who gets like depressed or, you know, in periods of I call being in a slum or slump. Um, but I've definitely seen that side of myself this year to the point where like it was super hard for me to find motivation to do anything. And I feel like that's why or that's one of the reasons why I've been gone from YouTube and Instagram for so long. If y'all know and follow me on Instagram, y'all know I used to post pictures like back to back to back, if not every day, at least two, three times a week. I'm looking at my Instagram today. I haven't posted a picture in like over a month and that's not normal for me. But my mental health has really been like affecting me in my work and has caused me to like procrastinate on a lot of the things that I need to really like tighten up on and um and I know I need to stop being so hard on myself because I know you know a lot of people get into these periods where they just kind of need a moment to reset I just kind of feel like I've been in a position where I've been resetting for so long but life has been hitting me back to back to back with like big big obstacles not nothing little like some major stuff and i've never been in a position like that so i kind of was struggling to find out or figure out a way of how to handle everything that was being thrown at me but today right now i'm definitely in a better headspace definitely in a better mindset position and i'm ready to take on the rest of the year and next year head strong head first but yeah my mental health this year was has definitely been tested like to the max i feel like um 2023 definitely almost broke me it didn't break me but it almost broke me like i was standing on by holding on by literally a hair um but my friends definitely made it my friends and my mom definitely made it all better for me. If you're somebody who's watching this video right now and you feel like you, you're feeling like how I was feeling or you're feeling like me in regards to, you know, you're in a slump and you're depressed and you don't know what to, like, what to do to shake the mood. One thing that helped me was my mom like my mom knows me so well she knew like when i wasn't myself i would you know i could i confided my mom a lot that's like my best friend and um you know i would just tell her like mom i'm not really feeling like myself or i'm depressed or this and this is going on or like this is going wrong in my life like i don't know what to do i just need you know a break she with her sneaky tail stuff um would text my friends and i really love this too my mom and my friends are like close to where they text and call each other outside of just me and my friends talking so get you some friends like that y'all um there's been times when my mom would set up like dinner dates and just be like oh i'm taking you to dinner and like be ready our reservations are at this time whole time we go into the restaurant and my friends is already there so it was like stuff like that and little outings like that with the people who mean the most to me that really helped me out of like my depression and helped boost my mental health and get me out of that rut so if you're somebody watching this video and you're feeling like how i was feeling and you just kind of like you know are in a rut like not feeling like yourself get you some friends girl go out girls night get dressed get drinks get dinner it doesn't even have to be like going out to a club but just to like a nice restaurant will really help with your mental health i promise the next question is, have I been thinking about going back to school? And that's really crazy because I definitely have been thinking about going back to school. Um, originally, I don't know if y'all know, but some might. Um, originally, I was going to school to be a 
lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer so bad. I just knew that was going to be my career ever since I was a little kid. Like, and what inspired me to be a lawyer? I never told nobody this, but like, I used to watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians growing up, like, faithfully. And I knew that their dad, not Bruce, but their dad, like, their real dad, like, basically was a lawyer. And I was seeing how they lived, like, this extravagant lifestyle and had all these things. So I'm like, oh, like, when I grow up, I want to be a lawyer because I want to live like them. I want to live, like, a expensive carefree just luxur luxurious lifestyle like them they had everything to me as a little girl watching them growing up so i'm like ever since then i know like i want to go to law school but now that i'm like an adult and i'm just looking at the reality of like how long law school like the whole law law school process is I'm like, yeah, I'm 25, like, I'm pushing 30. I don't want to be in school for four or six more years. Like, I want to be able to go back to school a year or two and be ready, graduate and be ready to start in my field. So, my friends now, most of my friends are in there. All of my friends, for real, are in the medical field um, two of them are nurses, and so I'm like, I think I want to go to school for nursing, like, if I do decide to go back to school, and I just feel like that, you know, what I know now and how I feel now, if I could go back and redo college, I definitely would have changed my major and went for nursing, just because the real events that have been going on this year, and just, like, corona from, what, two years ago, it just really shows me like the demand for nurses, you know, like I've developed like a soft spot for wanting to help people. And I just like, damn, like it would be so, I feel like it would be so fun to be a nurse, you know, like you taking care of patients, you're nursing them back to health. I'm, I've always been a nurturing person, but I feel like as I've gotten older, like that soft side of me, is really, really coming out now. And I'm just like, damn, like, I want to help people. I want to save lives or, you know, I want to help del deliver babies. So, yes, I have been thinking about going back to school. And if I were to go back to school, I would definitely go for nursing. And plus, like, nurses make, nurses make good-ass money. Like, they get to choose basically, like, you want to be a travel nurse. You want to do this, this, and that. You want to work in, you know, the children's hospital. Or do you want to do um what you call it like correction be a correctional facilities nurse like all types of there's different avenues for nursing i feel like and i feel like that's really cool so i definitely would want to go back to school to be a nurse but we'll see if i ever get that opportunity next question is what does your dream life look like and what is your reality now um, that's a good question because I've never really sat myself down and really thoroughly thought through like what my dream life is like. You know, I kind of, I'm kind of one of those people that like live in the moment and don't tend to really stress out on what's to come or, you know, like I, I hate stress. Like I cannot deal with stress. I don't deal with stress well. So I kind of tend to try not to think too far ahead, but I understand too though, we're getting, I'm at an age to where I kind of need to figure my life out for sure, you know? So I guess this is going to kind of force me to think about my future. But off the top of my head, um, my dream life, I feel like is like every, damn near every girl's dream as far as like, I want to get married. I want to have kids kids i want you know to be an entrepreneur i want to have my own businesses i want to be with a man who who matches me you know i want that just like american dream now everybody has different different definitions of what the american dream is i understand but like when y'all think of the ultimate american dream what do y'all think about like i think about marriage i think about 
a solid foundation with somebody. I think about kids. I think about a big house with my kids playing in the front yard or being that stay-at-home mom with her own businesses and like dressing cute and little women and going to my kids sporting events and stuff like that or school recitals or you know like that's that's what I want. That's my ultimate goal. Um I want to put myself in a position to where when I do have kids, my kids are set. You know, I want, granted, I'm going to teach my kids what it's like to have to work for, you know, the things that you want. But I don't want them, like my parents used to do, me and my siblings. Like, we're going to teach you, but we're going to make sure, like, we're going to teach you worth ethnic and how, you know, how hard you have to work for the things that you want. But I'm not going to, like, make it to where some parents literally like don't take care of the kids at all and force their kids to kind of like not raise themselves but provide for themselves i never want to be that parent but they're definitely going to know the meaning of hard work i want to be so established that i could go and buy whatever whenever for whoever and not even strip off of it like granted now i live a really good life i am able to go get whatever i want I'm able to go buy whoever whatever I want. I'm able to go do whatever I want. I'm able to get up and say I want to go to Bali tomorrow if I really wanted to. But like I want like not have to work so hard and still have all this abundance of money and income coming in. Like I'm not there yet and I want that for me. Like I want to be drinking sex on the beach next to the beach in fucking I don't know where somewhere out the country. And I'm just making thousands and millions and millions and thousands of dollars. And not, there's no worry in my heart. That's like the ultimate goal for me. I want to be happy. I'm, a, I'm happy now, but I really want to be truly happy. Like, if that makes sense to y'all. You know, I just want to be stress-free. I just don't want any worries. I just, and that, that might sound a little unrealistic to some people, but I feel like that's definitely possible. Like, of course, life is going to come with obstacles and trials and tribulations but i just want like to just live life for what life has to offer me life is so short and i feel like we don't really think about that and take that into account but life is definitely so short i just want to make the best out of life and just i want what's for me to be mine you get it and i'm coming for everything that is supposed to be mine and I'm going to make it mine. My reality now, I still live in California. And I just want to, I want to move. I want to move out. I, I feel like I've outgrown the Bay. Like, Bay will, the Bay will always be home to me. I have a love and hate relationship with it. But I just feel like it's time for me to spread my wings. Like, my true love, I know, is not in the Bay. <laughs> my husband is not in the Bay. My kids, I would never raise them in the Bay. So I just really feel like I'm at an age where, okay, I'm looking to have kids maybe in a year or two, get married, you know? And I I want to start that somewhere else. I don't want to start that here. But my reality now, you know, I have my boutique. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm making good money. I'm uh, trying to get back to my content, into my content creating bag. Um, but yeah, my reality now, I can't complain because there's a lot of people my age and older that wish they could be in my position and do what I do and can't. So I'm forever grateful. And if y'all are wanting this, go out and get it. It's yours. It's already yours. You just got to put that work in and just get it and manifest it. Manifestation is so real. Like, I didn't really believe too much of that until recently but i started speaking stuff into existence like just the other day i was like oh like i wish i had ten thousand like an like an extra ten thousand dollars just fall into my lap right now or i i wish i had the ten thousand dollars right now in my purse that i could just go and spend it on whatever i want do y'all know god gave me that ten thousand dollars that's i'm saying that to say I'm not bragging, but I'm saying that to say power of the tongue is so real. Manifest manifestation is so real. Faith, having faith in God is so real. Like, God is just so good. Every time I do like these videos, y'all always ask me about my BBL. And if I'm getting 
a round two. So the next question is, am I getting a BBL round two and how do I keep up with the weight gain or the weight that I have gained in preparation for my BBL? So the supplements that I was taking in order to gain weight for my first BBL, my draw, I got my first BBL December 13th of 2022. So it has, it's coming up on a year. And let me just give y'all the backstory of like my whole BBL journey because it's been a long time coming and I'm talking like years. So um, to give y'all the backstory, when I started my BBL journey, I was literally 110 pounds, like no cap, 110 pounds. But I was just so like, I had been wanting a BBL for years and this was maybe like four years ago when I started trying to like, maybe four or five years ago when I was starting to inquire about BBLs. I just knew forever, like, even when I was younger, like, before I became who I am today, I just knew, like, when I when I make it and when I am able to afford to get a BBL, like, I'm getting a BBL. And so, sure enough, I finally got in a position to where I could get a BBL, and I was too skinny. So, the first doctor that I actually reached out to to even get the procedure was Dr. Jung Money. If y'all know who Jung Money is... That's like the BBL. He girl. told me after looking at my um photos that I had to submit, because you know you gotta submit photos when you inquire about BBL. He told me to get butt implants. <laughs> Y'all, that's how little I was. He said to thin, maybe you should try butt implants. And I'm like, butt implants? No, like I'm never gonna get butt implants. Like I would never get butt shots or butt implants. Like, no. If I didn't have enough fat to do it, I'd just rather not do it at all. If I can't even do it the right way, you know? So, I'm like, damn. Like, I got hella discouraged. I'm like, I'm never going to be able to get this BBL. Like, I'm that I'm sad. I wanted, I wanted a BBL so bad. So, after that, I reached out to another doctor, Dr. Fisher. Because I had seen that they did, like, the Siani or whatever Siani, Siani, the twins the the two twins he had did a bbl on them so i'm like okay well like these girls are more like my shape my height my stature um my build like let me see if he would do it so granted i submit my photos and he didn't tell me to go get implants but he told me like you gotta gain weight so I got discouraged all over again because I just never saw myself being bigger than 115, 110. I'm I'm little. I'm 4'11, five foot on a good day. Like I don't I don't envision myself getting big like that. So I gave like I don't know the BBL lusting, lusting for a BBL, like a break for a minute. And I just started eating, like just gradually eating. Granted, I started to gain a little bit of weight. So I'm like, okay, cool. By the time I knew it, I was probably like 123. I reached back out to Dr. Fisher again. He still told me I had to gain weight. So I'm like, at this point, I'm getting discouraged. I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just not meant to get a BBL. Because there's no way like gaining weight should be this hard. Like, I just didn't see it being that hard. So I one day just so happened to be scrolling on TikTok. And I came across. You know, just, mind you, I don't follow nobody on TikTok. So, this, these videos that I'm watching are just, like, based off algorithm, I guess, and just on your explorer, I would say. So, I'm scrolling on TikTok, and um, I see this weight gaining, like, I guess, promotion, you could say. I'm talking about weight gaining supplements. So, of course, I'm intrigued as somebody who's trying to gain weight for a BBL. I'm like, okay. I stop and I watch the video. So I'm like, okay, let me see what she's talking about. Mind you, I had already paid my, I didn't mention this, but I already had paid to go to Dr. Fisher for my video. Like I paid the full amount. I think I paid like 5000 I want to say. It was something like that, 5000 And so... Like, if I had to cancel, I wasn't going to get all my money back. They was going to keep a 1000 of my dollars. 
So I'm like, okay, I gotta give this BB away. So I'm watching the TikTok and she basically just shows her like before pictures and then like shows the the after pictures so i'm like whoa like she really got body like she really got thick off these pills like let me try to find whose page this is because mind you it's on tiktok so i'm like looking all over instagram for the page and i finally find the page i dm the page and i'm just like hey you know are your testimonies are they really real like i'm trying to go get a bbl and I'm struggling to gain weight and my BBL is paid for it and I'm really trying to go. I've been trying to go for like two, three years now at this point. And she just was like, yes, um, it does. The, the, the pills do work. I was like, my main thing was like, is it like a pitamin? Like, cause I've taken a pitamin before and I hated it because of the side effects that it gave me while I was taking it as far as like being like hella sleepy. And, like, after you stop taking it, the weight don't really stick. So, she was like, no, it's not like a pitamin at all. Like, it's two pills versus, like, a syrup. So, I'm like, okay, I'm desperate anyway. Let me just try it. So, the girl ended up sending me the pills. And, y'all, when I say I've been taking them and been hooked ever since, y'all, I, every time I feel like I'm losing weight, I take the pills. And I got to stop what I'm doing to show y'all. The pills are these two right here. This is literally magic in a in a bottle. Like these pills from Serving Body, y'all. When I tell y'all these are my holy grail to how I've been able to gain weight and go from 110 pounds to now I'm like 130, 135 on a good day. But I didn't ran through so many of these sets, y'all. So what these pills do, mind you, they're all natural ingredients. So it's nothing in here that's going to harm you at all. Um, I can list some of the ingredients in here. Zinc, maca, black maca root, all of this stuff. All of like the weight gaining like supplements or herbs that they tell you aid in weight gaining is in these pills. I've had no complications at all with these pills. These pills have not harmed me in any type of way. I know when I first advertised them on Instagram, people were like, oh, they're not real. They don't work. You don't really take them. Or y'all better not take those pills. Da -da -da -da. Y'all, I've literally, right hand to God, I'm not even lying. I took these pills and they worked for me. I took these pills maybe for a month straight before every meal. I know it says to take them one time in the morning before breakfast and one time at night before dinner. But I literally was so desperate to gain weight from my BBL, being that I had already paid my BBL off two years before I was even able to go. I was like taking these with every meal before every big snack. And y'all, I literally went from 110 to 145 like that. Um, I just couldn't stop eating. And these pills didn't make me tired they just made me eat more to the point where like i'm eating a large meal and then i'm snacking right after because i'm still so hungry it's like my body didn't know when it was full because it never got full i was just always eating so those are the pills that really helped me and as far as having the weight stick after the procedure um these these are the pills as well I didn't do nothing else special, nothing else out of the ordinary. I just kept taking those pills. After I stopped taking it, my weight stuck. I still remained the 136 that I was when I got off the surgery table. Um, and like I mentioned, whenever I feel like I'm losing too much weight or I'm not really eating and I don't really have an appetite, I <laughs> pop these pills in and I'm back eating like I ain't ate in day. Um, I know a lot of people sell these supplements weight gaining pills whatever you want to call them but serving body is by far the only company only brand that has the best prices in the game go over to serving body and cop you your set so y'all can start gaining weight so a lot of people write me literally every day asking me how i gain weight how i gain weight from my bbl how am i just gaining weight how did i get the weight to stick and that is literally the only thing that i say as far as bbl round two i'm definitely getting a round two just because i fell so in love with my body right off the surgery table that i just thought i was super thick and now that i'm a year post up i'm like where did the weight go 
where did the fat go? Because my booty looks how it looks before I went to get a BBL. And I just have a little mix and max about my body that I don't really like. So I'm definitely going back for a round two. But this time I'm going to Columbia. I'm not going to Miami. Just because I feel like Miami really limits the amount of fat that they take out and put in you versus going to Columbia. There's not really no limits. And some people might be like, oh, that's, you know, that's bad. Like they could really like suck everything out of you and kill you. I get that, but like, I don't want to do a round three. I want this round two to be my last round and I'm done touching my body for real. Like, I'm done. I'm done. Y'all talk about me and bad enough. Oh, you got this thing. You got that thing. You did da, da, da. I'm done after this. I promise. The next question is, what happened to my boxer boyfriend? <laughs> Y'all, I think I don't want to go into too much detail because I have another video that I'm dropping after this video as far as like going into depths about the tea in all my relationships. But what I will say is me and the boxer are no longer together. Um, and why? I just feel like people outgrow each other every day. You can force a situation to work because you want it to. But, like, if it's really not meant for you, God will really, like, expose and bring things to light. That'll make you have no choice but to cut ties with that person, you know? And that's not no shade towards him. I don't have any bad blood towards him. I don't wish any ill feelings upon him. But that's just, like, me being honest. Like, I'm always going to be honest with y'all. I just feel like... We got to a place where it was just like nothing left to do but to let go, like on my behalf. Like I tried to make it work and it was just not working. Like we, I told myself I wasn't going to go into depth because I want to save it for the next video. But it's like if it wasn't one thing, it was another. And it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I have a bad habit of staying in situations longer than I'm supposed to and I'm really trying to break that habit so it was like I was like okay like it's it, it's time to walk away now like it's not nothing left to do but to walk away um and he didn't do anything to me per se or in particular so I don't want y'all to like think like oh like he did something to her for her to leave and start going to bash him or riding him because it's really not like that it's just you know people outgrow each other and it was just one of those situations like we just outgrew each other the love wasn't enough to make things work so in relation to that am I single Um, I, I would say I'm single, but like I'm dating, if that makes sense. Like after I ended that last relationship with the boxer, Darren, um, I told myself like, you know, I had a moment of self-reflection where I was just like, damn, John, I'm like, you're 25. You haven't really been alone and single, like single for real since you were 15. Like ever since I was 15, I was in a relationship where I was dealing with somebody on like a serious level so i feel like a lot of my youth was was surrounded like by niggas you know like i haven't really allowed myself to live life for real because i was always dealing with somebody or talking to somebody and me when i'm in a relationship i tend to really want to be loyal to that one person until they give me a reason not to be loyal to them and i just start doing me and not caring but um yeah, ever since I was young, I've been, like, in relationships and had dealings with people. So, now that I'm out of this, out of my last relationship, I tell myself, like, I wanted to just give myself maybe a year just to experience life and what it's like to be on your own for real. That's what also contributed to, like, my mental health and, like, where I was mentally this year. Um, I really had to learn how to, like, be alone and love on myself and relearn me and really get to learn me. I feel like before relearning me, I had to really get 
to the nitty gritty of me, like to the root of me. Like who is Jonai for real? Am I single? Yes, I'm single. Well, until a nigga makes it clear that I'm his and he's mine, baby, I'm single. Cause I'm done overplaying my parts with these niggas. Next question is, why did me and Isis fall out? Are we, how did we get back cool? And do I trust the friendship? I really feel like I should say this question from when I'm around her, but I'm going to give you guys my side of the story. And I'm sure she's going to give y'all her side of the story. And then y'all can differentiate between what y'all feel like is real, what's not. And y'all feel free to tell me if I'm in the wrong because I really don't feel like I'm in the wrong, but she no, doesn't feel like she's in the wrong either. We didn't already talked about it, but I'm going to let y'all decide. So basically, we, this wasn't last year. This was the year before last, I believe, 2021, 2021. And so we have, I'm sure you guys know Kamila or remember Kamila if you don't. She's in one of my other videos that I have posted on my page. Um, It was Kamila's birthday it was like october and we had just went to the raw wave concert out here in oakland ahead of time it was like a last minute outing whatever so we all went and the next day we was already talking about going to reno for kamila's birthday just like on the fluke and so the night the day after this concert Kamila and Isis had been calling me on group FaceTime all morning. And they was just cracking little jokes like, oh, Jonah, we finna go to Reno, but you gonna have to sit in the trunk. So that was already a red flag for me. Mind you, I was impressed about going to Reno. I really didn't feel like going, but I was gonna go for the sake of it being my friend's birthday and she wanted me there. So I get to pack in my bag and I'm just like, hey, let me know what we're, what we're doing or if there's space in the car. If it's not, it's cool. I'll stay home. They like cracking jokes like, no, you're going to send the trunk. No, it's space. Like just hella back and forth shit. You know, one moment is space. The next moment is, oh, there's no space. So I'm bougie. I'm a brat. I am spoiled. I'm whatever you guys can say. I wanted my own seat. I didn't want to sit squished next to nobody. I didn't want none of that weird shit. I'm very much spoiled. My friends will tell you. So, the whole plan was to meet at my Nana, Nana house at 3 p.m. That's the halfway point between where they were and where I was. So, and Isis had made this comment like, if Jonah, if you're not there by 3, we're leaving you. Which threw me off because I'm just like, as a friend, don't say that to me. Because I wouldn't say that to my friend. I'd just be like, please make sure you're on time. You get it? Like, But I'm not going to say, oh, if you're not there at, right at 3, we're, you're getting left. That's hella rude. So, whatever. I was already thrown off earlier that day, but I still was packing to go on the trip. So, I finally get to my Nana house. I got there probably earlier than three. They're still stuck in San Leandro. San Leandro coming towards Hayward when there's traffic is going to take a super long time. So, I had been waiting on them, but my Nana wanted to go to the grocery store. So, being that they weren't even there yet, I was like, hey, y'all, I'm going to take my Nana up the street to the grocery store. I'm going to be right back. So, as I was at the grocery store, they ended up pulling up already. So, now, like I was waiting on them, they're waiting on me. So, literally, the grocery store was two minutes away from my Nana house. They could have waited. So, I get back, whatever. I drop my Nana off, help her take the groceries in her house. I go to put my suitcase in the trunk of the rental car. Mind you, it's a five-seater car. Perfect. Enough space for the people who I thought were going, which was me, Kamila, Isis, and Isis's nigga at the time. So four, it would have been perfect, right? I go to put my suitcase in the trunk. Shit is falling out of the trunk. Like it's so stuffed in that bitch, shit was falling out. So I'm looking at Isis like, okay, like where's my suitcase supposed to go? Like there's no space, stuff is already falling out. Like who do y'all even have with y'all that, that's in this car that wasn't even supposed to be in this car? So bypass that. Isis' boyfriend started taking stuff out the trunk to fit my bag in there. Okay, cool. I go to get in the back seat. Why was there already two other girls? Big girls. Two big girls in the back. Kamila, and then it would have been me. me. Mind you, me and Kamila are small. But when I tell you the two other girls was probably two times me and Kamila together me and kamala we're little we're 4 11 them girls was like five six five seven like 
big. So I'm looking at Isis because Isis already knew. Isis know me so well. She already knew I was going to feel some type of way. So I'm looking at her like, how is this going to work? Mind you, Reno from the Bay is a four hour drive, but it was raining. And so it snows up there. So being that that was like what was going on, it would have took like five, six hours. I refused to be squished in the back seat with girls, one that I didn't know, two that wasn't supposed to be coming on this trip, three didn't have a room to sleep in with, and beforehand was already asking if they could give me half on my room to stay in my room. I was thrown off because I'm like, in my head now, I'm like, Y'all are supposed to be my main bitches, like my friends. If I was doing a trip, I would have made sure y'all two, Kamala and Isis, y'all had a guaranteed seat. And I would have made everybody else that was add-ons at the last minute figure out how they were going to get up there. But I was going to make sure my bitches was straight. But that's just the type of friend that I am. So I felt like that should have been reciprocated when it came to me. Even though, yes, it was Kamala's birthday trip, we're supposed to be, in a sense, catering to her on her special day. I just wasn't going for that. Like, I just feel like if y'all, if they would have told me earlier in that day when I was asking them, hey, what's what's the what's the situation with the car, with the seats, who's coming, and they were real about it, then I could have been like, okay, sucked it up. But y'all knew how I was gonna react, and y'all blindsided me when it got time to, for us to meet up at where we agreed to meet up at, and now it's like y'all disregarded how I was gonna feel and just made it seem like, oh, she's gonna suck it up. Like, she has no choice but to suck it up when she's faced with it. And what also made me mad to, at Isis is she seen my face. She laughed and she was like, well, y'all figure it out. It don't got nothing to do with me. And hopped her little happy ass in the front seat because her nigga was driving. And then going to say, well, if you don't want to sit in the back, do you want to drive? And I just feel like as a real friend, she shouldn't have came at me like that. Like, why should the only solution be... Oh, if you're not going to squish in the backseat with these bitches you don't know, Jonai, you're going to have to drive. I'm going to have to drive through treacherous weather, snow, sleet, rain. No. Yo, why would y'all even trust me to drive? Like, I've never driven in those conditions. Are y'all crazy? We will all die. So I go. I'm hella mad at this point. I go in my Nana's house and I get to call my nigga and me and Isis's other friend and I'm just crying on the phone because I'm so hot I'm just so furious like that they would even try me like that and so I'm texting Isis as I'm on the phone with them I'm like hey like I don't think I'm gonna go Isis response is do you want my nigga to book you a flight so you can meet us up there tomorrow mind y'all the trip was only supposed to be Friday Saturday come back Sunday so booking a flight for me tomorrow would have been I would have meant I was leaving the bay Saturday just to turn around and come back to the bay Sunday. That wasn't the plan. The plan was to be there Friday, Saturday, Friday, Friday night, which was like the eve of her birthday, and coming back Sunday. I would have missed the whole turn up. No, I don't want to go. No, I don't want your boyfriend to book me a flight. Booking the flight was not the problem. I could have booked my own flight and I would have had no problem flying to Reno if I would have knew beforehand that's what I was going to have to do. I would have left way earlier than 3 o'clock Friday so I could have been there when they got there Friday night. So I'm like, no. And I felt like her little comment and her saying that was really like trying me. Like now, now you really playing with me. Like you was already playing with me, but now I'm really feeling played with. So that's like why really what started the downfall of our friendship. And then as time went on and we weren't speaking, me and Isis were both super stubborn. Like, I'm not going to say sorry first and she's not going to say sorry, especially if she feels like she's not wrong. And I damn sure felt like I wasn't wrong. So we just went like over a year without speaking. And through that course of the year, we weren't speaking. I was just hearing little stuff like little he say, she say, you know, about people running stuff back to both of us. And of course, at this time, at this time, we're not thinking like, oh, they're trying to play us against each other. We just both met, so we listening to what's being said to us about what the other person is saying. But now that we back cool, we both like, oh, they was definitely trying to play us against each other. Like, it's weird. A lot of people feel intimidated and jealous of me and Isis's friendship. I don't know why. I feel like it's because we've only known each other for maybe three years, but we're literally so close. I feel like a lot of people are intimidated by that because not a lot of girls meet friends where they, you know, where, where, where their friendship is like that. So I was dealing with this nigga 
and Isis was dealing with his partner. So they all ran in the same friend group. The nigga was calling me, the nigga that I was talking to was calling me, telling me like, yo, why your friend going out of her way to call me to talk about you? So now I'm looking at Isis even more weird. Like I was already looking at this bitch weird, but now I'm really looking at her hella weird because it's like, we're not cool. Okay, that's one thing, but now we're not cool and you want to go run and tell the nigga that you know I'm dealing with that I'm talking to other niggas, lying and saying that I'm talking to other niggas, lying and saying that, oh, I'm using him, lying and saying I got all this other stuff going on, which wasn't true at all. And at that time, again, I'm mad at ISIS, so I'm believing what the nigga is telling me. So I'm not thinking twice like, oh, this nigga messy himself. He lying. I'm like, oh, like, it gotta be true. You know, like, what, what nigga indulges in bitch conflict in in drama and then so like as me and Isis got back cool we kind of laid everything on the table I brought the situation to light where the nigga was running back stuff that she was supposedly saying about me to him and she was just like I never said that like I wouldn't even do that so long story short we basically have a clear understanding now we're by we, we're so far past that situation like it doesn't even bother us we was just talking about it actually the other day again in front of Kamila because you know I just got back cool with Kamila too so we was really just laying everything all over all out on the table again and it's like now it's a situation where we can laugh at it but by but back then bitch it was I wasn't laughing about shit I wasn't smiling nothing nothing was funny bitch I was seeing red that whole year we wasn't talking I was seeing red I wanted to fight her she wanted to fight me she was saying all types of crazy stuff about me I was saying all types of crazy stuff about her like and it was weird because it's like, I would go get my nails done. Mind you, Isis and the lady who used to do my nails worked in like the same suite, facility, whatever. And I will go in there and not say nothing to Isis, act like I didn't see her, she didn't exist, and just go get my nails done. Like, we were that petty. And then, now that I think about it, so after we had fell out, right, I, you know, I'm very faithful to whoever do my hair or does a service for me. I will go to you. I don't care if we beefing or whatever. Like, treat me like a regular customer if you want to. But if I like your work, I like your work. So after we had fell out, I had went to go get my hair done again. Mind you, before we had fell out, Isis was like doing my hair for free or charging me $100 to do my hair. So I go, you know, me not thinking the situation was that deep, go book a hair appointment to get my hair done. We didn't say nothing to each other the whole appointment. She really treated me like a regular client. I'm like, okay, babe, I'm not going to say nothing to you either. So after the appointment, I asked her, like, what was the ticket? What did I owe her? Why did this girl try to charge me when she charged everybody else? As if we wasn't just friends. As if you last week wasn't charging me $100 to do my hair. Now you want to charge me $250? And it's not even about it being $250. It's the fact of... We get into it. Now you want to charge me full price. Like you charge these other bitches out here. Like we wasn't just the best of friends. Like we just wasn't hella close. So I'm like, oh yeah. That that was like the final straw for me. Like you going to charge me what you charge these other weak ass bitches. And I know everything about you. You know everything about me. We best friends. We did the hella shit together. Oh, that, that just threw me for a loop. Never went back and got my hair done by her that whole year, ever, <laughs> ever. It took for us to get back cool recently for me to start getting my hair done by her again. And when I tell you that that bitch talk hell of shit, she was telling me how my hair was looking a mess, atrocious, ugly, like letting them other girls do my hair. She was talking hell of shit about me, y'all. But now that we back cool, I'm not letting nobody else touch my head but her. Do I trust the friendship? I trust the friendship. I feel like that situation made us closer. You know, like friends fight all the time. And I feel like me and Isis are so similar and we're so alike that like we bump heads a lot because we're like the same person. And I feel like sometimes I don't know how to deal with somebody like myself. And she might feel the same way. Like you're too alike that you don't know how to take it. Like you're used to dealing with other people who aren't like you. So like you dish shit out and you know, you think it's cool. But when you start playing with people and they start playing with you the same way back you play with them, then it's like, what? you know. But we back cool. How we back, how did we get back cool? Um, She ended up telling, like, 
our mutual friend at the time that she wanted to start back doing my hair again and so of course the mutual friend reached out to me and was like i still want to do your hair again da, 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 da. and so much time had passed between me and her falling out i was just like okay like i'm not holding a grudge like i'll let her do my hair again and literally i walked into my appointment really back like this like nothing ever happened like we was laughing in the appointment i done brought her dinner i was being so nice you know because a year had went by i felt like it, the situation wasn't that deep to me anymore it was i was in a position to where i could feel like okay i'm not in my feelings no more i could laugh about it i could talk about it without being mad and we could get past it the last question is did i move to houston i have not moved to houston yet am i moving to houston i definitely did want to move to houston i love houston houston is definitely a vibe to me but when I started getting my feet wet in Houston for real, I'm like realizing how messy the whole influencer circle is. Like, and this is no shade, but like I've been to Houston multiple times before I really started getting out there the last couple of trips that I've been on. And I always had a time, no drama, no nothing, no fake pages, talking shit, no nothing. Y'all, the last two times that I get out there, bitch, is there so much drama? Like, it's crazy. And I just really feel like people in Houston are just fake. Like, everybody wants to be somebody. Everybody wants to be important. Everybody thinks they're this person, they're that person. And the reality is nobody's really nothing. <laughs> like, and I'm not saying that I'm somebody. I really feel like I'm a normal ass person too. I'm just somebody that got followers. But, like, literally, everybody out there got fake jewelry. Everybody got fake drip. Everybody want to just fuck with people because their people are able to get sections and pop bottles and do all this other shit. I'm very much a person, like, wait your turn. Like, if you ain't got it to do it right now, you don't got to dick ride no other person and fake fuck with nobody else to, to be around that. Like, wait your time. Stay down. Like, you know, do your thing. You're going to make it yourself. Fuck is you leeching off somebody else for but that's just me and where i come from i guess they different out there and then it's like they be trying to run your business back and it'd be all wrong and no facts at all it'd be literally the complete opposite for real so like that's what i kind of peeped about houston like if i still want to move to houston but i was i'm not so ready to just jump out there and move tomorrow like now i'm a little bit hesitant but i still love it there the people that i met there i love we all we all go go out we have a good time it's nothing but vibes but them houston streets is messy like not even not even just like the influencers and the content creators it's literally like everybody is messy like older people are messy younger people are messy it's like the mess just is coming from everywhere and i'm very much a no mess person i don't do bullshit i don't do drama i'm very back very much in my own world i don't pick sides when it comes to beef i just be like sitting back and observing and looking around and like oh that's crazy that's crazy that's crazy wasn't she just what but i keep my comments to myself but if you are trying to get into like this influencer content creator circle in Houston, I would just say like my best word of advice would just be like, have your own group, like your own core, like bitches that you've known from back home or that you actually really, really know. And it's cool to make other friends and be friend content creators and other influencers and stuff like that. But you just really got to like just watch, watch everybody like this shit i didn't think it was this fake until like i literally like seen it firsthand <laughs> like this shit is really like bitches being with each other just for the looks for instagram you know but a dad be talking about each other behind closed doors off camera or off social media like it's stuff like that but i haven't moved to houston my goal is to move to houston 2024 um and i'm just super excited like i found a place i really like um i'm starting to get my feet wet in houston a little more i've met a lot of friends cool friends i go to houston all the time we kick it they're my they're my people i love them um and i just i just hope to like collab with you know me now trying to be back on youtube i want to collab with some youtubers and content creators and you know but 
that's my scoop on Houston. I know this was a super long video, y'all. This is the outcome of my makeup. I'm more concentrating on talking to y'all than I was doing my makeup. Looking in the mirror, it looks pretty good, but what do y'all think? Looking in this, let me look in this camera. I'm gonna take my hair out, I'm gonna get dressed, take some pictures today. But what do y'all think? Let me know what y'all think about my makeup tutorial. Thank you for watching my video. I'm going to drop a bigger video next. So you make sure you tune in and you have your post notifications on. I'll give you guys a little hint about what the video is going to be. Isis is going to put me in the hot seat. And we there nothing is off limits. We talking about relationships. We talking about young boy. We talking about NLE. We talking about beefing with other celebrities all that so make sure you guys tune into my next video thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys later